All right, hello everyone. Welcome to another episode of Tech Tuesdays. Well, I think this is actually going to end up being Tech Thursdays because um, I wasn't able to post this on Tuesday. But anyways, this week I'm going to be talking about the Audio Technica BP4025 XY stereo microphone. I have a lot of points to get through, so I'm going to try to get them get through them as quickly as I can. Um, so for those of you who are maybe new to this, um, what is a stereo microphone? Well, it means that this microphone does not just record a single signal, but two signals indeed, a left and a right. So if I angle this correctly, well, maybe you can see just a glimmer of the gold capsule inside. Maybe if I get it closer, it's kind of hard to see. But yeah, there's actually two microphone capsules housed in this one body and they're slightly angled outwards um, so that from this single um, kind of point source solution, I can record uh, stereo, kind of the way how our ears hear sound with a little bit of compromises uh, based on how close these mics are. but. Again, that's that's more so a design philosophy, not necessarily something that's inherently wrong with this mic. So it's very popular in the field recording community. Um, I myself, when I was looking for something uh, like this to purchase, um, it was because I was using a handheld field recorder, like the, um, the Zoom H5, and I wasn't quite happy with, um, well, the built-in mics. Um, and I was looking for something to give me better sound quality while not also uh, being too expensive for me to buy uh, from here in Jamaica. So um, this came up repeatedly as a large diaphragm condenser option. So that just means that the capsules inside are around an inch or so. Um, and yeah, I mean, I have a list of, of pros and cons that I might just as well jump into. So the first um, pro is the weight. Now it is top heavy. <laughs> so uh, all of the weight kind of resides in this, excuse me, uh, top portion here where you see um, most of the electronics are housed. Um, but it does have all the benefits of being a large diaphragm condenser microphone. Uh, namely no low, low noise floor and um, high sensitivity, relatively high sensitivity. So um, I don't remember the specs of this mic off the top of my head, but I think the noise floor is somewhere in the ballpark of maybe 13 dB, 10 dB. Um, I will maybe put it on the screen um, just to be sure. But um, yeah, the noise floor is negligible. Um, especially if I'm out in relatively loud environments um, trying to capture sound effects, then this performs extremely well. The mic itself barely contributes anything to the overall noise floor of the recording, and that's just electrical hum from the mic itself being on. Um, it's resistant to humidity and high heat. Um, I live in Jamaica, a tropical environment, so um, recording outdoors with this, you know, I, I knew it had to be resistant to heat and humidity because Jamaica is pretty much always hot and humid throughout the entire year. Um, and this performs quite well. Um, it doesn't start to break up or anything. I don't have to wait for the capsules to warm up or to adjust to the environment. I'm pretty much set to go, um, as long as I have everything, um, set up correctly. And I also failed to mention, well, you're, you're kind of seeing it half um, in my half-constructed windshield from Rycote right now. Um, I actually bought this a size too small, and it's it's kind of a pain to, to get it off and back on again. So I just kind of left it on uh, for the sake of not having to uh, redo this whole thing. Yeah, so don't make my same mistake. Uh, try to buy the right size. This one was about a millimeter too small um, for this mic, but yeah, um, it's just one of those things. All right, moving on. So it has a uh, 10 dB pad, yeah, right here, 
Um, again, I have to probably put the specs on, on top of the screen uh, or on the screen for you to know what the overall uh, max SPL is. But I think it, this covers, um, you know, safe range of hearing and a bit more. So I think it might go up to around 100 and... 30 140 db spl if i'm not mistaken um so it's it, you can record a pretty wide range of 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 dynamics with this microphone um and that pad just allows you to record louder signals um what else do i have here uh it's perfect for uh recordings that have a lot of lateral motion like from left to right right to left um so like crowds um, or maybe certain environments where you have a lot of trees and, and there's different things happening on, on, on each side. Um, again, the, based on how close the mics are, um, the source itself has to kind of be a little bit spread out in order for you to really have a sense of stereo left and right. Um, it's a, again, it's a pretty compact solution for stereo miking. Um, you might be able to get away with using this um, for like making a guitar cabinet, although it might not be my first choice for that. Um, it can perfectly perform well in a situation like that. Um, I've used it as even uh, maybe a crowd mic, you know, um, just putting it out in the audience and using that for like a broadcast stream. Uh, it performs pretty well there. Um, and it also comes with its own shock mount and this pouch, this nice pouch, which I don't really use as much as I, uh, think they intended for me to. Let me see if I can do this kind of one hand opening here. Yeah. So it comes with its own, uh, foam windshield. That's really, if you're doing some kind of indoor recordings where the wind, uh, is not really that heavy. Um, it also comes with oh, it also comes with this um, shock mount, which you can see it's it's still in the packaging for me. Um, this is really nice if you're using it just on like a traditional mic stand, um, but I find like for field recording, it's just <laughs> this makes a little bit it, it it makes a little bit too much noise, especially if you're going handheld. So that's why I got. Um, this shock mount from Rycoat, which has a little bit more wiggle room, but also it, it, it provides better suspension for the mic so that I don't have as much uh, vibrations getting into the mic, to the body of the mic, um, whether from my movements or just from wind and, and that kind of stuff. So uh, just something to note there. Um, and it also comes with this uh, five pin to three pin XLR cable. Uh, so gray is the left side and red is the right side. Uh, I I think I don't normally remember what the gray side is, but I can also I can always remember red is right. So as long as I can remember red is right, red is always right, then I uh, plug this in correctly. So you can see the output here because it has two capsules is a five pin. Oh, a five pin output. So you can see that here. Right. Um, okay, so now I'm gonna talk about some cons of the uh, BP4025. So while it does perform very well um, in field recording, uh, the frequency response does tend to sound a little bit uh, mid rangey so I mean all all cardioid mics inherently have a low frequency roll off in their design so uh, even without the pad on uh, I can feel that it's a little bit bass light uh, and I think that's just part of the design of it of both of these capsules being cardioid capsules put one alongside the other uh, what else um, yeah so Something about the frequency response of this mic just makes it very, it's not very flattering for spoken word um, or speech. It's not really designed to be a spoken word, 
uh, microphone, but I've I've tried it on like choirs and and groups and that kind of thing, and it it's quite resonant, like around one k, uh, that one k five k region. If you look at the frequency response chart, you can see um, a trend that you know just just demonstrates that um, highest sensitivity in that frequency range which kind of makes voices kind of sound a little bit too uh, nasal or they just poke out uh, a little bit you know and I've tried fixing it with EQ but again it's just it's not necessarily the ideal uh, mic for spoken word um, what else so this is a pro and a con so as you approach uh, zero axis sorry zero degrees on axis uh, there's a slight dip in the amplitude response um, which kind of emphasizes the sides more uh, which also makes it just that much less mono compatible so basically what I'm saying is that it's more sensitive to the sides than it is to whatever is directly in front of it. So yeah, take that with a grain of salt and just, um, you know, you, you pick and choose what you really want to use it to record uh, because it can still be good for uh, close miking certain stereo sound effects. Uh, but just bear in mind that the center, um, whatever is common to both channels might not be as loud or as precise because this goes into my next point which is the, uh, what is it? The, the directionality of the mic at different frequencies uh, is a little bit, um, it's not quite precise because of the phase interaction between the two mic capsules and, and different frequencies. I'm not gonna really jump into that as much, uh, but just know that as you move up and down the frequency spectrum and move around the mic, certain sounds can tend to sound a little bit phasey. Um, and it's also not just a one mic solution if you do intend to use it outdoors. You're gonna have to buy a uh, windshield and windjammer, you know, if you if you really tend to be if you really want to do any sort of outdoor recording. Um, of course, uh, the professionals among you will know that but if you're a hobbyist um, kind of looking looking to get into field recording uh, it's not something that you necessarily think about immediately that you know this is a must-have I I must say that I think I might have preferred waiting a little bit and going with a larger wind wind uh, windshield just because this one doesn't really um, handle very strong gusts of wind as well as I I had hoped but then again I had to put this together pretty quickly for a project that I was working on last year uh, so I just got what I could get my hands on at the time and what was in my budget so yeah um, I think that is everything that I have to say uh, certainly a much longer Tech Tuesday video than I have done so far but I hope it is comprehensive there was more there was most definitely a, a little bit of rambling in here but uh, I'm trying my best to make these videos as informative as I can and you know if you're into this sort of thing this the more technical side of audio engineering then you can let me know um, what you'd like to see uh, me talk about or what what would you like to know about you know things that I use or you know just give general feedback um, it really helps for me to you know come up with the ideas for new content and that kind of thing so yeah um, definitely thank you for watching and I will talk to you guys next week alright bye